Thank you guys for tuning in to the Dope Vision Experience Podcast. Your boy Frank Nitty, I'm back for another episode. I got a special guest with me this week. One of the one take shorties that I used to work with. We've done a lot of different projects here in the Bay Area, man. She's a phenomenal, you know, model. She does uh, encouraging. She's she's one of those ones that's out here in the Bay that really op- welcomed me to the Bay Area when I first got here. So I really appreciate her, man. She's gonna talk to you guys about a lot of different things that she has going on. She's a, one of the top notch models out here that I I definitely you know admire and I look up to when she when it comes to doing that modeling. Anything on the runway, she kills it, top notch. So man, first off, I want to introduce Khalil. Talk to us, man. Welcome in. How you doing? Thank you. Hello. How's it been? How's everybody? Happy 2022. I know, man. Happy. I know with the pandemic, we haven't had an opportunity to just kind of like link up like we normally would, you know, different events and stuff here in the Bay Area. But, you know, getting a chance to see you right now is like a breath of fresh air because, like I said, we don't see each other. It's like our first time seeing each other after we normally would see each other like every other weekend or something like that, right. man. Right. Shoot. Well, shoot. The way they got it, you can't go out like we used to no more. You can't party like I know. Me. I know. I'd be kind of, I'd be kind of timid myself to kind of, you know, get out there. I'd still be kind of moving, kind of slow. I don't want to, you know, mess nothing up here in the house. I don't want to get the kids or anything kind of set back because they can't exactly. be out of school and all that good stuff for me being reckless and careless and all that type of stuff. Exactly, because they've been out of school for way too long. Absolutely, and I need I need a man because I I ain't, I'm trying to do trying to do homeschooling. Your boy ain't built for it. I figured that out early on. I'm not built for it. Yeah, yeah, it's been difficult, yeah. difficult. Yeah, yeah. They kids out here doing this new math. They don't even carry the one no more. I'm from the carry the one generation. They don't even carry the one no more in the math. I'm like, who teaching these kids how to do this type of stuff? Hey, I stay out of it. I stay. <laughs> So man, how you feeling, man? How you feeling? How's it? I know you. You say you haven't really been moving around, but before that, man, we want to talk about this modeling career that you got going that you've been popping. I've been seeing you cross the gram and dropping some heat out there, man. Talk to me about it, man. So what goes into that? Into those those photo shoots when you preparing for that type of stuff? Like, what are you doing to? What's your routine like? Um, you know what? I I haven't really thought about that. That's a good question. Well, the first thing I. I really always try to think about like hair. Um, hair is the one and the most important thing I feel like because that kind of sets off the look, the kind of look that you're going for. Nice. Then I pick, you know, outfits because I I style myself. So nice. And I haven't really had the chance to work with a stylist, but I have had the chance to work with a lot of uh, dope Bay Area designers. So that's yeah. Pretty, um, but yeah, I don't really have a routine. I just make sure you know my teeth are brushed, my face is clean, <laughs> so I can you know get makeup We're ready. Looking fly, you know. Looking fly, nice. <laughs> So when when you when you um like what kind of got you into that because like I said I met you on the set you know what I mean it was like my first time meeting you you was with Waikiki you know she had a bunch of beautiful women there doing it for one of her collections and stuff like that like what kind of got you into the modeling sit, sit, um scene? Well, actually, my god sisters uh kind of got me will push me into it you know they uh, model as well um they're twins. So they have their own brand, Envious Twins. Um, so they linked me up with their photographer, uh, Maurice Chapman, and it's just been That's on. What it, <laughs> man, so what? What kind of what kind of inspires you to kind of get on that runway? You know, like because you know a lot of people they they see they see you guys, especially when we go to different events, they see you guys on that runway and they don't know how to do it. Like, what inspires you to get up there and do that? Are you are you do you have any fear when you're on the stage or anything like that? I, have the ultimate stage fright believe wow it or not. really i couldn't i can't tell i have the ultimate stage fright do you get or do you feel like you can get over I, that at, at all what helps is i don't have to like say nothing like if i had to have a speech and do a, a runway i'd probably pass out oh yeah public speaking it gets I, a lot of people that's one of the number one fears public speaking i would probably pass out but um I think what helps me get over it is I just focus on the end of the runway and the camera. So I make sure like I'm not hopefully making a funny face or trying <laughs> to make a funny face or a funny move. So I, 
that just helped me keep focused. So I kind of, you know, zone out and don't even be paying attention to the crowd. Yeah. So are you, do you like practice your, you know, cause I you know I've watched American Top Model before in my life, you know, back in the day. So are you like, cause you know, Tyree kind of be having these girls doing all these crazy things. So are you practicing all those type of walks or are you just in the moment when you hit the runway? I'm really just in the moment, but I do, I, trust me, I have watched all the greats from Tyra, Naomi, Iman, like all of them. I, I've watched all of them. From yeah, they're, they're they're definitely yeah they're definitely some top notch top notch top notch models that are kind of encouraging kind of inspire a lot of the women and like I said I watched it back in the day when it kind of first came on supporting Tyra and things like that and she like I said she had them doing like amazing things and weird stuff and you just be like what what is that you know what I mean but then after they get the photos back you kind of like see okay this is why she was saying do this and this is why she was saying do that type of thing so as a like I said I call you one take shorter because anytime my anytime I got an opportunity to photograph you. It's like I just say something and you'll do it, and it's like bam, snap the shot, and it's like that's it. And it was like I got it. And I'm like normally I have to kind of work with a model, kind of get her to move like this. So where do you think you get that type of energy from? You just kind of like is it just experience, or you just kind of like just got a knack for it? I I don't know. I guess I got a knack for it. Um, my family been taking pictures of me ever since I was born. So photogenic. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know it. Follow our directions very well. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's take a quick break for our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a trusted by the world's best because it empowers people with creative ideas to succeed, from websites, online stores, to marketing tool analytics. Squarespace is an all in one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Squarespace is the leader in the web design. Stand out online professional websites, online stores, or portfolio. With Squarespace, you can turn any idea into reality. Choose from award-winning templates, customize the design to fit your personal style and professional needs, drag and drop images onto your site, and easily move and add and delete page sections. Easily change fonts, colors, and pages or configurations. Present your work to, to the world, your portfolio. Display projects in customizable galleries and password-protected pages to share private with clients. Get 24-7 support from Squarespace customer service team, unlimited hosting, top-of-line security, and an enterprise-grade infrastructure. Squarespace is the best place to start an e-commerce brand and grow. Whether just getting started or you're already setting products, Squarespace has everything you need to power your store and grow your business. Your customers can manage their cart and easily check out without leaving your store. They accept different payments such as Stripe, PayPal, Apple Pay, Square, and many others. Manage your local taxes and rates and shipping costs as well. Squarespace has marketing tools to help you reach your reach your clients and also grow your audience. Drive traffic to your website and measure your success with powerful marketing and analytic tools. Squarespace has integrations with all the leading social platforms so your customers can keep up to date with the latest from your website and even buy your products directly from Instagram. Highlight important announcements like seasonal sales or holiday hours with intuitive banners and promotions. Analyze and optimize your Squarespace analytics from a single interface. Get insight into your visitors and their behavior through visual reports, covering statistics, and, and like pages, com com conversions, popular content, and more. Squarespace has transparent and affordable domain purchases. Upfront pricing, no hidden fees. If you're not ready to create a website, don't worry. When you register your domain with Squarespace, Squarespace, Squarespace set up a beautiful spam-free holding page while you finalize your vision. When you're ready to create your beautiful website to promote your business, don't forget about Squarespace and to support the Doe Vision Experience podcast and my YouTube channel. You'll first need to click my link in the show notes, save 10% off your first subscription on your website, and use my promo code PARTNER10 at checkout. Thanks for all your support. Now let's get back to the show. And we back, man. We had to twick, take a quick break from you guys, man. I hope you guys enjoyed that quick break and some of the stuff that we were talking about. But we're going to get right back to it, man. So we were talking about, you know, Tyra Banks and all the crazy things she used to have the girls doing and stuff like that. So when you was looking at Tyra Banks, was that your was that your the person you want to uh, model your career after or was it just something that you just took inspiration from? Uh, I just really took inspiration from because really um I never really looked at like the models personally. Like I have my little select like models that I do look up to, but I was more into the fashions mm. or into the designs okay. and the designer. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. And, and, and with her being a supermodel, of course, she... So are you talking about like the the high end designers? That's what you're talking about, like the high end designers that she was working with, like the Gucci's and all those different type of designers, stuff like that. Yeah. The Prada. Prada, the Terry Mosley, and you know Versace and Donna Karen and all those. All and now those. it's like all, everywhere I look is uh, Balenciaga and Dior. It's like those are two fashion houses that's really popular right now. It's like that's what everybody's wearing. And so you see, but it's weird how, you know. I love Dior. I'm, I love Dior. So like, you know, I started my, you know, high fashion collection in like junior okay. high and high school because yeah. I'm an 80s baby. So I I was I watched like Sex see, in yep. the City and I was into the videos and you know what you know the celebrities was wearing and I would watch E because you know E would show all the you know the fashion mm-hmm. week and all the fashion shows so I was able to, you know watch those on TV and you know I would get my little cassette tape and record them when they would come on on Saturday you know in the morning and that was my Saturday morning was that watching type of stuff. The, the fashion. So you was doing the fashion stuff, and I'm watching. The, I'm watching Ninja Turtles and stuff like that. That's my. That's my Saturday morning car, cartoon uh, rotation early in the morning. When you were saying you you coming home and you're watching E and all those other channels, I'm trying to watch Rap Rap City and you know so 106 and Park those type of things. And you watching and you watching the fashion shows. I was on, I was on, I was on Rap City and TV Raps. I I kept my videos. I recorded, had my pre-recorded videos. Come home and watch my videos. I was in a lot, definitely into music and the music fashion and the hip hop fashion. I was definitely, definitely and, what, and like, cause like I said, I, I knew about the fashion, but that just wasn't my thing. I wasn't like crazy into fashion. Like I knew about it and stuff like that. So what do you think's different from like the fashion back then to the fashion now? I know like that's like a couple of decades. Like what do you see that's different and what do you see that's new? Or on the flip side of that, what do you see the similarities in, you know, something that's you know, from like the Gucci's and the Prada's and, you know, Christian and Balenciaga's and all those type of fashion houses? Um, I feel like Balenciaga is okay. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like Balenciaga is like a high-end, like, gap. Um, They not really... I mean, they got cute shit, don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? I I like I like I like it, but it's not something I'm more into the like, like the, the Gucci's and the Pradas like and stuff like that. And the Pradas, the Dior's, yeah. the Ferragamo, Fendi's, and all those. Yeah, I'm I'm more into that um, and that type of stuff. But I do I do see like. Um, more the mm-hmm. vintage uh, look come more you know and i do see like the hip hop influence now more than ever yep. of course yep. you know i guess back then they didn't want to admit it but you know what i'm saying i feel like you know the hip- artists Pushed like it. really put these put these designs I know for sure like because... Tommy was one of them for sure like Tommy here figure was one like they really didn't you know you know, black people really didn't wear, it, and then it just start all of a sudden. It kind of like popped. You know, you start seeing the underwear. Oh, when yeah, Aaliyah had it yeah. When Leo put it on in the video, was that uh, uh, the motion video? What was it called? I forget the video she was in. Where she was on the boat? Was it Rock the Boat? I forget which video it was. I, I, went, I went and got me a top yeah, yeah. I went top the little crop hoodie, the tiny yep, jeans. Yep. I mean, if it, as soon as I seen Aaliyah do the Tommy Hilfiger campaign, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that, and that. I think that's, that's kind of what sparked it. But, you know, kind of going back to you, like, what are some of the things that you think could you could have done different at the beginning of your modeling career, not looking back on it? What do you think you could have done differently? I probably would have started earlier. Um, I probably would have started earlier. And I probably would have... Uh, not looked at it as more of a side mm-hmm. thing and maybe did that before you know school yeah. and stuff so but i i was always focused on 
finishing school, finishing school before I wanted to dibble and dabble in. Yeah, I t- I, so I think well, that was one thing I would change. I would start earlier. What, so what what, what kind of advice would you give like somebody who's like like at the beginning of their career, like you said, much younger? Like what kind of advice would you give them? Like would you say, hey, like look, like pursue it. Jump in both feet in and just go hit go 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 all the way in on it, or just kind of like hey look you kind of watch somebody else take under somebody's wing like what kind of advice because I know I don't know anything about them when it comes to like modeling career like where it starts do you want to take some talent shows or like all that type of stuff. Um, I would say get get your feet wet with it. I wish I had like a team. Like I wish I had like a stylist. I wish I had, like, you know, a team of people that, you know, put together visions and ideas because it's hard to, like, you know, do it all by yourself Um, along with the photographer because the photographer should just be able to focus on taking the pictures. He shouldn't be having to, you know, direct and kind of, like, set up the scene. Yeah. So I, w- I would say, I would say um, with anything – Study yeah, your craft I get it. And, I get um, it. And get a, a, a solid team of, of people. Yeah, you de- you definitely need a team, and that's something like you said, where you know the photographer has to focus on just what he needs to do, and not necessarily be focusing on all the let me get your makeup and your hair, and let me model you. Like I don't have a problem helping models when you know posing and things like that. That's na- that's normal because not everybody going to pose. They can't see what you're seeing in your mind. But when you come, when you're talking about like getting the set, and when you have a vision and it's your vision, and you're trying to bring me into your vision, I think you should have more of it put together than me having to try to come and pry out of you and then trying to figure out like, and then you not, cause the thing is, I don't think the models will tell a photographer in the moment that she doesn't like something. But then when she gets the photos back, she's like, this is not what I wanted. You know what I mean? Instead of like being a little bit more. I, 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 mm, I tell you right away, if I don't like something, I take a few pictures. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, so we could go ahead and dead all of that, move, remove that out of your camera memory so we could get to the next one. Yeah, and that's what I want you to, that's what I want you yeah. to speak on. Like when it comes to the model, like having a voice when you're actually on a shoot. Like talk about you having a voice when you're on a, when you're on a photo shoot with the photographer. Is you and the photographer, like talk about that, like your experience with the photographer. Because the photographer, yes, he has what he wants to try to get done. But then you as a model, you're trying to, you're trying to get something as well. So talk about that when you're working with a photographer and you want to go out or come out a certain way like how do you you know voice your opinion for someone who doesn't like you say public speaking kind of scares somebody so they might not want to offend the photographer so but talk talk to that point for me um well i would always say like kind of discuss like have a brainstorming with the photographer prior to your shoot so you know what i'm saying you could kind of get a feel for what the photographer wants versus what you want and like try to combine that and put that together yeah I, I love it when i love it when the model has an idea of what she wants and we can both collaborate versus me trying to direct it and like i don't have a problem with it but i want them i want it to be a collaborative right. effort between the both of us so we both can be happy exactly. because what happens is the most of the time we'll do this whole shoot we spend hours on it we shoot it i photograph it get it back to you and it's like ah, man, this ain't really what I wanted. Or I'd be like, ah, man, I should have got her right. to do this. When when it's a collaborative effort and you guys both are working on it from the beginning, then it, it comes out a little bit more. Or the, the organic part of it is just so much better at the, end, at the end of the day. Right. And I also feel like you should, you know, establish, you know, relationships, especially with photographers, because, you know, they may already be working for an agency or they may know somebody at an agency and could pass on your pictures and always say, uh, be on time to your photo Ooh, shoots. Thank you. Um, don't be on point to your photo shoots. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know like you might get nervous or sweaty and, you know, just always like be prepared, um, in your photo shoots and, um, and speak up like you know if some is uncomfortable or you don't like how you feel in this position or you know what i'm saying or if you're not understanding what the photographer wants from you 
You know what I'm saying? Communicate. Yeah, you have to you have to talk because like I said, if you're not using your voice and speaking up, you're not gonna get what you want because I always say closed mouth don't get fed. So in that in that instance, what does success look like for you in the modeling industry? What does that look like for you? Like everybody has a different, you know, outlook on what success look like. For you, what does that look like? Um success for me is being is being happy and making sure like my client is happy um with you know the photos and and what they want and it's just establishing relationships um that's success for me like I'm not signed to any agency like I don't have no manager or anything like that I get my own bookings um I am working right now currently with a uh, team filthy model oh, yeah, uh, yeah. under the direction under the direction of filthy rich. Um, so explain that. King explain that because I know I saw I saw you post that. Of course, I saw it on social media. I saw you post that, that you was working with filthy rich, the, uh, the rapper from the Bay. He's from the Bay Area, but I don't know what city, but I know he's from the Bay Area exactly. I know exactly what city from Oakland. From okay, Oakland. yeah. And uh, as far as like, how does that work? Like for explain it to like uh, someone who doesn't know, like myself or some model or looking to get an industry. How does that work when working with an agency? Do they find your bookings for you? Do they get the Do they get all the photographers? Like, how does that whole uh, thing work? Well, I've always been independent, so I've always been proactive and to you know reaching out and submitting for castings by myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've been representing myself. Um, so as far as working with uh, Team Filthy, it's more of, it's a collaborative effort. You know what I'm saying? Because he is a rapper, he is an artist, so that's it. His main focus mm -hmm. is the music. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, he hit me up and asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. And you know, we've done calendars, we've done you know club uh, promos, so. Um, we've taken a break, you know, since yeah. the pandemic. It's understandable. It's kind of off everything. So right now he's focused on the label, uh, Funk or Die, ENT. Nice. So he's doing that and, you know, pumping out new artists. Definitely. So if he, if you, and when you work with an agency, if you decide to book something outside of the team Filthy, do you have to pay them a percentage back or something like that? Or is it all, you get to keep all the revenue yourself? No, you know what I'm saying? I, I, he, if he uh books us, like when he books us a party, he, he sets okay. the price on, um, you know, as on his back end because he got to yep, get his money sure. too. And, and so he sets the price on what each of us get at the end of the night. And I can say it's been, you know what I'm saying? It's been pretty good. We've been making money together. That's dope. So, that's dope. Happy. That's dope. That's dope, man. So, and do you? But I, I've never had to like worry about like if I get my own booking outside of uh, Team Filthy, like you know, he, they've supportive. Like they don't. It's not nothing like where I'm like mm -hmm. signed or you know locked in contract. I, you know, I'm just an ambassador or representative. Nice. So. so, are you actively like looking for for bookings and things like that, or you just kind of do it when you feel like it? I've pretty much been doing it what I feel like it, you know what I'm saying? Some photographers will hit me up, you know what I'm saying? Like um Kevin uh Allen, um Irk, Oh yeah. The mm -hmm. jerk. He's a So he hooked me up um with a job and he got me on the back of the square pie pizza. Okay, truck. nice. So that drives around the bay That's area. I'm on, I'm on the back of that. So, you know, he hit me up for that, you know, that got me paid for that. So, hey, that's kind of, hey get money. You know, I said it's all about yeah. relationships. So, you know, like, you know, I've been knowing Filthy for years. Um, for, oh, geez, pretty much over 10 years. So, you know what I'm saying? He hit me up. It That was nothing, you know what I'm saying? To join his team and collab with him. And, you know, I, been knowing um Irk the Jerk so and he got into his photography and I shot with him in the beginning stages of his photography so it's all about establishing relationships you know I got relationships with the designers photographers you know it's all about yeah, absolutely 
keeping Absolutely. up with so it. Absolutely. So I've always had this question for between, you know, saying photographers and models, and I, I discuss this kind of like quite often. I want to hear your opinion. So who should pay? When a, should the if you guys are both established or no if he's a if he's a new photographer and you're an experienced and you're an experienced model should the photographer pay or should the model pay for the the shoot that you guys collaborate on? What are your thoughts on that? Um, um or vice versa. I feel like okay, so I feel like if I hit you up and say Nitty, like let's shoot. I feel like I should pay mm, you. Good. Because I... But, like, if you hit me up and say, like, when, you know what I'm saying, when Kevin hit me up for this square pie pizza truck, he was like, yo, he was like, would you be interested in modeling? And he asked me to bring somebody else along, but it didn't even work out. And they was cool with mm -hmm. just me. Luckily, then I got paid okay. for that you know at company so you know what i'm saying and he worked out his own rate so i feel like if the photographer you know books with the model you know what i'm saying it should work out work, that, should work. work that out a rate but yeah you know y'all like, like if you hit me up and say hey i want to take these photos i'm gonna submit it to this company you, you know what i'm saying you might be on the billboard or whatever you know what I'm saying? Okay. Then we discuss, you know what I'm saying, monetary terms after we able to, you know what I'm saying, market it because both of us should ben benefit. It's, a mutu it's, like. it's mutual. When it, uh, that's how I feel. Like if it's mutual for the both of us, I don't have a problem with shooting for free. But I just sometimes, I, I just get, you know, because I, I don't really do a lot of portrait photography. I know we have, you know, it's kind of like you portrait photographer, wedding photographer, you know, event photography. It's so many different types of photographer. And I like to do events. I've done the weddings. I, it really wasn't my thing. Portraits, I kind of like it. Sometimes I get into it. But, you know, when people hit me up like, hey, let's work, do that. And, I be I'm not gonna lie, you know. Sometimes I be with it, and then sometimes I don't because I feel like sometimes it's just a it be wasted. People kind of like you know take advantage of my time. Like if I take you know if I say hey man we're gonna shoot for ninety minutes or two hours, I expect for you to come and be ready to shoot when we get there, not me show up and then I gotta sit around for two hours wait for you to get your hair and all the nails done. I feel like you 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 you're using me now at that point. Whereas like if you pay me right. and then you know, if we like hey look this is my price. And then if you come and then you're late and then you make me go over the time and then I say, hey, this is an overage fee, then I, it's more transactional. But I'm always I'm all about being collaborative and working with people as long as it benefits the both of us. You know, I don't have a problem with it. And I'm trying to do right. a little bit more portrait photography, getting into it a little bit more. You know, I, I it's OK with me. I'm not it's not my favorite thing to do. Like, I, I, I it's OK. Like, I like the fast paced, in, you know, event type. I can go shoot. And then when I'm done, I'm done. I'm done with it. You know what I mean? But when the when the, the portrait start coming out, it's just a lot more headed. Like you said, you had somebody to come to your come. You ask somebody to come with you, and it don't work out, and it's just like just wasting a lot of people's time. So it's just me rambling about that, just how I feel about it. But what's what do you think? Some what do you think is one of your biggest failures in the industry, and what did you learn from that? I feel like um, I don't necessarily feel like I've had any failures. I just feel like. Um, it's maybe things that I, I didn't, like, pursue. Like, I probably should, you know, have did some, you know, agency walk-ins and just went to a few agencies and try to get signed to an agency. I, that probably would have, you know, made things easier because, you know, with an agency, they come with a photographer and hair and makeup yeah. and all this. Versus when it's just you, you got to, you know pick your hair and, you know, kind of decide your makeup and, and set your scene, stuff like that. Where do you so. think you get that creative, uh, the creativeness from when you're saying you got to do it all yourself? Because do you kind of come up with the idea yourself or are you like looking through magazines or you're looking at different videos? Like, where do you think you get that aspect from? Yeah, I'll look through magazines or I'll see like a, a tree <laughs> or something <laughs> Or, you know, or I see a movie or, you know, just different things that I see every day. And I'll be like, oh, that might be look cute or, definitely, you know, stuff. What do you, like, what do you think so. is some of the common myth about the modeling industry is? 
Um, I think the common myths is that it's like easy, um, that, you know, the model just, it just takes her pictures and it's just like that, but it's like, you really got to keep yourself in shape. You got to, you know, make sure you go to the dentist, you drink your water, you know what I'm saying? Like you have to, you know, it's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I- and I, I can see it, man, because like say, like you say, I, I, as, as the picture comes out, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 not, it's definitely, it's definitely not, it's definitely not. So when you are, when you're on that, when you're on that runway and you feel like you turn, like, does the music have a lot to do with how you respond when you're in an outfit that you're probably not so happy about or you don't love the most? Like, how do you overcome that when you see a piece that you're in? You're like, man, you're just like, ah, oh, this is not the one. I wish I had that one on. Or how do you, how do, how do you, how does that play out in your mind? Like when you're actually going through the process. Um, I've never really been in a situation where I didn't like feel cool and like what I was wearing. Um. Cause I see some, I, I see some, I see some great pieces, and I can see some not so great pieces, and I can see the discomfort or the lack of energy that a person might have in a certain piece. And I don't understand. I don't. I don't sometimes I don't know. Is like, is the model really looking at the piece that she's wearing for herself, or should she be like looking at the piece just to kind of like for the uh, designer herself or the d- designer himself? Like, or, like you know what I mean? You know, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's kind of difficult sometimes for a model to kind of like. Cause some of the pieces I see that like on the on the high end fashion, I'd be like, man, how is she pulling that off? Walking with that with that confidence, cause that outfit looks like. Why would you wear it? like when the arm sleeves are way down to the floor and they're walking? I'm like, how do you walk and feel cool in it? Balance, and um, like I said, you kind of just zone mm. out, really. And it's not really, you know, what you're wearing it. It's kind of like how you're wearing yeah. it, I guess, in a sense. And most of the designers that I've worked with have, have, you know, made stuff like, oh, I want you to specifically uh, wear this. So they made you. stuff. Okay. I've, yeah. So, so that- I pretty much have been able to keep everything that on the runway that I've wore, probably minus maybe one or two outfits. Oh, ah, so that's that's a different aspect. I wasn't even thinking about it like that, where the model actually make it, you know, directly for the person or for the model. Like, they see this model, you know, in their head, like, I'm going to make this just for her, and it's going to look dope on her, versus just, like, making a collection and then kind of trying to fit you into the collection. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what are some of the books that you probably you've read that kind of inspired you or do you want to kind of like let people know that, hey, there's these some good books and some good resources they might want to check out? OK, so. Um, I'm reading this like poetry okay. book. A lot of different poems and like a lot of different like, you know, inspirational quotes. Um, it's by Arm Drake. Um, I can't think of the name, but he's an excellent poet. You can follow him on Instagram. Um, but he has a lot of poetry books. Um, I'm reading the sequel to the coldest winter. Okay, ever. I haven't read that one before. So I'm on. So I'm on that. So you know, I'm not gonna give away nothing because, yeah, that's like I really like those kind of like drama like. Um, suspense type of books, like inspirational books. Uh, Forty Eight Laws. Oh of yeah, Power that was a good one. It's yep. always a good. But this is the thing. Like you have to be a a reader to read Forty Eight Laws of Power because down to the fine print, because it's a lot of fine print in the Forty Eight Laws of Power, and it's a lot of like you know I'm a little side notes. Read the side notes. Yeah, it's a very deep. It's a very. I haven't finished. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't finished it because it's a very, you know, it's a it's a long read. It's a it's definitely a long read, and it'll have a lot of different, you know, you know, things in it that you really have to kind of take to take heed to, and you have to like really process it. So sometimes I read two or three chapters, and then I put it down for a little while, and I come back maybe a, you know a couple of weeks later, and I come back and reread those chapters just so I can get a better understanding because it's a very you know knowledgeable book. And so I try to make sure I, I can take it in as best as, best as possible. 
Lately, I've been reading the the Nipsey book. Yeah. I've been reading the Nipsey book lately. Okay, it's been really good, you know, just like um, from the beginning. It goes, it goes, it starts from the beginning, you know, where he got his name from, you know, what he was going through. Because we just kind of, a lot of people got on at different times. I was kind of, I felt like I was kind of early on, even I was like bullish, no name, kind of around that era. Uh, uh, I, I smelled, I smelled that nigga <laughs> Nipsey. I smelled that. Yeah, for real, man. Like, you know, I'll kind of put my homies on to him. So a lot of people didn't catch on until kind of, kind of came around. Chris Shaw kind of came out. That's when people kind of started kind of bubbling, kind of hearing about him. But I was on, I felt like I was on a little bit early. And like, you know, talking about that, what is it, what did, what did Nip mean to you? Like, what did he inspire you to do and things like that? Yeah, tell me a little bit about that. Um, the, I first saw Nipsey Hussle in 2000. Um, he talks about it in Grinding All My Life at the end when he talks about when he was at the strip hop and, you know what I'm saying, and he had the, you know, he had the cream mm-hmm. them punks. So that was the first time I saw Nipsey Hussle. I think it was like a little tour with like the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know what I'm saying? And, and he was on tour and they had did a, a a party at the strip hop mm-hmm. in Vegas. It's this old uh, strip club. I don't know if it's still, I don't know if it's still alive, but it was one of them them hood strip clubs where it it was just mm-hmm. real lit. So I saw him perform there, and like he was better than the game. He was better than Fifty Cent. Like, I was like, okay, this little nigga looking like Snoop and cute and shit. And, you know what I'm saying? And, like, you know, I was right, you know, on stage. And, like, he smelled good. <laughs> so you could tell he... Yeah. He, like, and it wasn't like cologne smell Like natural. Good. Like, like, he had... Like natural. Natural. Eating. Fresh, like... Yeah, fruits. Yeah, body odor. Not eating all the processed like, foods. Okay, I said, okay, this nigga different. And so afterwards, you know what I'm saying? He got off stage and, you know, he greeted us and, you know, took pictures with us or whatever. And this was towards the end, you know, people was like dispersing and leaving. And then all of a sudden a fight broke out or whatever while, you know, me and him taking a picture and, you know, talking and getting the, you know, saying hi and, doing all his kisses and hugs or whatever and you know his crew start fighting and so he, he commenced to start running over to him so i grabbed him by his wow. hand and i'm like i just i don't know what it was but i just grabbed him and i was like no you a star wow and he yanked away from me and he was like i'm a crip oh first. you stay and true to his nature he, and he stomped them niggas out after that, and we left. And I was like, "Yeah, I said." And ever since then, I've been in. Oh man, that's a, that's an incredible story. Like you, you don't really hear about those real life because everybody I've talked to, you know, they've never really met them. He talked about it on grinding all my life. I was you, like, oh, "You remember it?" He rem- it's like it's like it's like that little moment right there, kind of make you a, a even bigger a, big of a fan because you were there. It makes you more of a fan because you were yeah, there. I was like, "Oh." I was like, I was like, I was there. I remember that because you know a lot of rappers they talk about stuff that they wasn't exactly. there. Exactly, they, they, they just making it up. But he was actually living like, like you said, how he probably smelled. Because I in the book I'm reading how when, I'm at the point right now where he went to Africa, where his dad took him to Africa, and he kind of like he left the trap and he didn't really know nothing about Africa. He didn't know about, about his people, and his dad just kind of took him over there and just really opened up his eyes about you know his people, his background, where he came from. You know, let him know this the world's bigger than just LA and his hood and different things like that and just seeing how he just you know evolved as a man and this book has really been opening my eyes to some of the things that I didn't know about him you know what I mean and then just listen to some of his interviews and how he talked about Dr. Sebi 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 and kind of talked about how he was like yeah. living by his ways and you know, not living by his ways but you know just you know living to the the way that Dr. Sebi said how we should be eating and things like that and that's when you said how he smelt and I'm like they probably put in the mindset, of, you know, because he was eating healthy. He was, you know, doing the right things. And I don't know if it was, you know what I'm saying, pre-Dr. CB or pre-him going to Africa. I just remember, like, I just remember he, he just smelled mm. nice. Like, you know, he he didn't stink. He didn't smell like, like, you know what I'm saying? And it was a smoky, like, you know what I'm saying, club. And he just had a... 
Natural like odor. A, a natural, good, oh. nice, oh, nice spot. Like he smelled fresh, like just like you know how you mm -hmm. get out the shower and you just fresh. I was just like, wow. I said he, you could tell like he take care of himself. So I don't even know if that was pre Doctor Doctor CB or pre Africa, but you could tell like you know uh, he took care of Man, himself. I was not expecting to hear that story, but I'm glad I got a chance to hear that story because, like I said, it just makes me even more of a fan because, like. When I started listening to him, I'm just like, wow, because he was cutting through. I felt like his music was cutting through because we had a lot of the, you know, up tempo, you know, catchy song. But he would just like, you know, just cutting through with just his words and what he was talking about. And then, of course, he, he dropped Crenshaw for the hundred dollar mixtape and how he just changed the game when it came to being independent and just his forward thinking. He was talking about crypto, Bitcoin, just all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? It was just like a different level and an evolved human being that you don't normally see from somebody as young as him talking that way and other rappers weren't talking like that and that's why I kind of gravitated towards him and then just to see when people start to really start listening to what he was talking about I'm like man y'all late bro like what's going on yeah he's been talking about this type of stuff and I felt like he was right in the point where he was trying to make this strive and just like really take off like I felt like he was already bigger than what he was but I felt like the world didn't quite know him like like I felt like I knew him and then when he dropped the, the victory lap I felt like that was his moment to like really go to the next level and of course you know the devil took him away from him so fast you know what I mean right when you kind of hit right. the hit your stride the devil kind of come in and kind of knock you off your knock you off your feet and like in that moment when he when, where were you do you remember where you were when you when you heard about his passing um, I think, I believe I was at mm. work. And what did it mean to you, like, when you heard about him passing? Like, what kind of emotions went over you at that moment? Do you remember? I was just like, here we go again. I was like, another one. It's just like, it just, it was just, it was just messed up. Yeah, I know, man. It was like. I, dang, I was like, you know what I'm saying? His. You know, his daughter, I, I just thought about his daughter and I just thought about like his his parents. I thought about his brother. I was like, just dang. And then I just thought about like his whole his whole conglomerate, his whole crew, because, you know, what I'm saying he was the, the head of all that. And it was just like, damn, you're feeding all these families. Like, yeah, now, he's, you, you, your your craft is feeding all these families. And then for to just take him away from us, because like I said, I was reading a book and just reading how, like, I didn't know much about Black Sam. Like, I knew that was his brother, I knew his brother was kind of like, you know, involved in it. But I didn't know how Black Sam was actually moving before Nip really got on, because he was the one that was really kind of being able to put money behind him a little bit, helping with the studios and different things like that. So it helped to kind of support him. Even though Nip was doing his own thing, his brother was the one that was really kind of like put the, put the push behind him. Like, hey, look, man, let's go ahead and do this. Let's get the studio up. You know, he talked about the 250 that he buried, you know what I'm saying? And they had to go dig it up and all that. And it wasn't, you know, it basically rotted. And just hearing that story and then reading about it and kind of like just putting the two and two together, it just makes it even more of a, like, wow, this guy was really moving different out here. You know what I mean? Just like, he was just moving different. And and for him to kind of like get taken away from us. So rest in peace to, you know, King Nip. You know, he, he really, really much inspires me a lot. Yeah. Definitely. So I had a question for you. So if you was in my shoes right now, what question would you think that I didn't ask you that you might that that, that I should have asked you? Um, I think you did pretty good. You know what I'm saying? I think um you asked you know the some good questions. Some questions I've never been asked before. So yes. I don't. That's what's I up, because I always feel like uh, I want to make sure that I get the questions off, because sometimes there are some things that people want to talk about that I don't quite hit, so I want to make sure that I give you the opportunity to, you know, get that question off, the things that they want to talk about. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, I have, I feel like I don't want to be selfish, but I do want to, you know, make sure that, you know, anybody I interview, they kind of talk about the things that they have on their mind to, you know, speak about. You know, so when you say I, I kind of I want to, I had a topic I want to go back to. I know you said you, uh, you said Tyra with Tyra and Naomi. Like, what were they doing during that time to make you say, "Hey, look, I want to do that"? What were they doing? Cause they was black girls in a white world, and they was pretty, and they was tall and skinny, and they looked look like, like, like you. Me. That's what I want to like, get to. You know, they look like you. Like, and so I was like, okay, so I was like. Because 
I always been skinny. I always, you know what I'm saying, been like tall and like awkward. So when you see somebody that is like, look like you and it's just like, oh, okay. So I'm like, this is like regular. Like, okay, I'm, I'm, I look like them. So it's like, y'all will want to be me. That's absolutely. <laughs> And that's what I wanted to touch on because I know a lot of women, you know, especially my kids, I try to get them to see things that, you know, women that look like them, they're doing things like them, like they want to do, you know, sports with, you know, basketball and all these other things. And they're like, Dad, and I have to I have to realize because I have girls and I have to realize because I watch a lot of, you know, baseball, basketball, football. And they're like, Dad, do girls play basketball? And I'm like, of course they do. Then I have to realize I have to show them that women do do those things. So I have to like consciously start to think, okay, let me let them watch the girls play basketball. Let me see. They want to do gymnastics. So I have to let them let watch girls, girls do gymnastics. And so that kind of, that's what I want you to touch on because there's a lot of things out there that women have to see themselves. Play you take them to play basketball. My dad taught exactly. me basketball. And my, dad, and my dad worked my ass off in basketball. Like he didn't play no games. My dad treated me like we was in the NBA, like we played for the Warriors. So you play basketball with them. I think a foundation you playing, you showing them, you know what I'm saying? Because that made me able to play with the mm, boys. Nice. And I, I try, I try to consciously think about it. I'm like, I have to kind of like get them into it and show them, you know, representation means a lot. And like you said, when you saw them on the runway and doing different things, it, it gave you the confidence to say, they look like me. You know, they're tall, they're skinny, you know what I mean? They're in a, they're in a white world doing what they're doing at the, at the highest level. And so that's why I try to like, you know, show them those type of pictures. And so for a woman, like one question for you. So when you see people who are online or on social media and they're modeling, like how do they, how do you help? How do you think they can make the transition from just being on IG modeling <clears throat> to actually getting on a runway and being in a campaign and things like that? What kind of advice would you give them? I mean, I wouldn't really have no advice because it seemed like, you know, social media and IG is like the lick now. So hey. I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. Everything is, you know, moving from, you know, in person to product, online, product, so. product placement and things like that, huh? Yeah, everything is, things are changing and advancing. Like, you know, like you said, like we own, you know, Zoom, we own, you know, film, people is doing fashion, Zoom fashion shows, you know what I'm saying? So I honestly really don't have no advice on like, how to you know transition because i feel like you have to be you know i'm saying you got to spread yourself you know why you got to be able to dibble and dabble in different areas so So (laughs) i have no idea and that's honest, is that because like i said you see a lot of models who are you know online and you said they, they might be cashing in you know product placements different ads that they might be running or different things like that like i said it, it's making a transition where you don't necessarily have to have that gate pe- gatekeeper to be the in person like oh i got to get in this campaign i got to go talk to this person like no you could just monetize your monetize your brand yourself you can you are the brand now so what social media does give you the opportunity right. to be the brand yourself you don't have to actually go try to you know get on a runway model get it get to a campaign and do all the different things you can just cut out the middleman and go straight to the vendor and get paid that way so that that's some good good advice like i wasn't like i think about it but i'm like oh, i don't really think about it like that like you don't have to do it that way no more it's things are things are different now so one of the last questions i want to wrap it up with if you can write a book tomorrow what would the book be about if i could write a book it would be about um I think I would write a book about a world uh, without the internet. Mm. That I would write about, like daily actual living without the computer. You basically that's the eighties the- baby lifestyle. <laughs> I guess yeah. yeah. That's, uh, I'm, I'm '80s baby too, so we we weren't we were outside. We were outside. You drinking out the water hose, you know. You playing kickball, and you outside have to you know. 
I, I would probably write a book for like kids, like a home economics book. Cause I feel like that's a subject that should be put back in school. That is home economics. I didn't take it, but I do, I do know a lot of women in our, you know, there was coming up around me that did take that class in that. And I think that along with music needs to be back in school. I think music is one of those things that need to be back in school too, because um, I was a kid and I took music, but I was terrible at it. But I do think music has, you know, at some point needs to make its way back into the school, you know, because right now kids don't really know. I don't think they really know how to make music. They just, rap over a rap over beats whereas when it comes to making music it's a much more of a process i feel like you know like right. you know maybe because i just grew up listening to right. like the timberlands and you know all those different guys where they you know you know dre dre and they just like make music they make music and and, and listen to my parents mm -hmm. music and you know what we call old old folk music now but you know just listen to that music how they actually make music versus now where you can just microwave music and put it out so fast yeah Yep, I would, I, would, I would definitely write a book about that'll that. Be, I think that would be pretty dope to kind of how to live life unplugged, you know, live unplugged from the in, unplugged from social media and just live and actually live in the moment and, and kick it with people and things like that. So before we get out of here, I want to say thank you and I appreciate you for, you know, hopping on and giving me a few minutes of your time and, and kind of listening to me babble about, you know, a couple of different things. But I appreciate you coming on. So I want to make sure you get in the plug, anything that you got working on, your socials and stuff like that. <laughs> having me um you know what i'm saying funk or die ent um team filthy models uh look out for my my friends uh del tree singer uh mac kitty rapper my girl slim yanni um the whole fod you know look out for them we it's, everything is coming out so just look out things are looking up you know what i'm saying hopefully covid will be over soon things is opening back up so wonderful yeah. wonderful for me i appreciate you i appreciate you for hopping on again <laughs> you know what i'm saying ig mac and ask kalia of course you know what i'm saying you could book me you know through my ig man make sure y'all tap in with mac and ask kalia she's one take shout if you're looking for experience model you know, she's the one, you know what I mean? I, I really appreciate her when she's actually on set because all I have to do is say something, she does it, and we snap and we moving on to the next thing. So make sure you guys book her, hit her up. She said she was shadow banned, so make sure you type her name and spell it out for them so they can make sure they get to the right person since you said she was shadow banned a little earlier. It's M-A-C-I-N-A-S-S-K-H-A-L-I-L-A-H. -S -S -A -A Definitely. And I'll make sure that be in the show notes. So whenever you click on it, I'll make sure you see it in the show notes so we can make sure you get directly to her. Book her. The price going up. She ain't cheap, so don't try to come and try to lowball her because she is an experienced model. She in the, she from the Bay. She got that Bay energy, so don't try to play her. Make sure you come with your money right before you actually go into them DMs because we ain't playing. We ain't coming for that sucker shit. So make sure you get in there and you come to the right, we had the right price. So with that, I always, like I say, man, it's collaboration over competition and always bet on yourself because without yourself, you can't do anything and you have to believe in yourself first to make sure you make sure you get to the next level. This your boy Frank Nitty from The Sip. I'm out.